Question number five. I've heard the term phase conditioning in various discussions on the topic of conditioning. Can you explain what is meant by phase conditioning? A phase conditioning is what we use for our optional level athletes. Okay, it's an all-inclusive, year-round, progressive conditioning program that we've used for the last five, 10, 15 years. The premise comes from some very well-documented publications. Dr. Larry Nassar's um, uh, Peaking the Junior Olympic Athlete, um, Bampa's book on periodization, and some research done by Dr. Bill Sands. So, um, you know, our gym, we've had the luxury of having the USA national team physician in our gym since 1988, Dr. Larry Nassar. He's the official team doctor on the floor at the Olympics, and he is, has been instrumental in educating the country and the world on conditioning. So we've had that luxury in our gym, and we've built our program with his, um, with his knowledge and his help. Phase conditioning is a program we use, uh, like I said, for all of our optional athletes. Um, and, and it's basically designed to increase the demands throughout the year with the overall intent to have the kids in pre peak physical, mental, rested um, condition when we get to our championship season. These are, these are athletes that you want to, do, want to do well at their state, regionals, and nationals. So we have a conditioning program that's going to put them, hopefully put them in that, uh, in that, have that possibility. Okay, like I said earlier, I used to condition athletes just wall to wall, nonstop, always intense, always, and we would just simply run out of gas by nationals. This phase conditioning program has really, really helped us with that. Now it's going to be based individually again because you might have some athletes that you might want in their peak performance at state meet. Because if they're not in peak performance at state meet, they may not have any shot of getting to regionals. Likewise, you might have some kids that are in a bubble that might not have a chance to make nationals. So at regionals for the JO athlete, you're going to want to peak some of your kids at regionals and then try to maintain through nationals. And then your top tier, tier athletes, your best athletes that are pretty much a given, although that's never, <laughs> that's never really a good thing to bank on, but um, your top tier athletes that have a great shot at nationals and you want them in their best performance to win a national championship, you'd peak them a little later in the year. The program consists of five distinct um, phases, with each with their own purpose. Phase number one is called the build-up phase. Basically, this is, a, this is a phase that you use right after a little bit of downtime after your championship season. You give them a little fun and games time. Um, basically, it's get back into shape phase. The volume of exercise is fairly high, okay, the exercise numbers is fairly high, but the intensity or the difficulty of the exercise is pretty, pretty easy, okay. We run it um, four to six weeks in duration. We use a build up 1A, build up 1B, build up 1C, and we run about four to six weeks of each one of those lists of skills, okay, and that gives them a gradual increase in intensity and, and volume so that they get ready for the next level. Okay, Again, relatively simple exercises, low resistance, a lot of calisthenic type exercises, push-ups, sit-ups, those type things, um, done in um, relatively high volume. Okay, um, This is usually done in conjunction when you're experimenting with skills, Okay, um, doing skill development, like I said, late spring, early summer, um, that type of thing. Um, this is an easy phase to skimp on if you're not monitoring it as coaches because the exercises are simple. Okay, we're doing jumping jacks. Well, if you're not jumping, okay, you're not getting anything out of it. So it's really important to monitor all, all phases, but this one's an easy one to skimp on because they're basically just doing calisthenic types exercises. Our next phase is called the max strength phase. Now we've gone through, you know, 12 weeks of getting get ready, get ready to get strong. Okay, we've done the build-up conditioning. Max strength is a, the most intense conditioning phase throughout the year. Okay, we use lower reps, higher resistance, and resistance in our gym can be in the form of increased, we increase demand for heights. 
jumping from a small spotting block, now we jump up to a large spotting block. We increase angles. Instead of regular sit-ups, we do uphill sit-ups. Or we add weight vest or maybe some supplemental ankle or wrist weights. Okay? We're not a big proponent of you pumping iron, and I'll go into that a little bit later. Again, this is two or three separate four to six week programs. Again, we use max strength, which is second phase, 2A, 2B, 2C, and it gradually increases the challenge. Okay. Um, this is usually done mid-summer through early to mid-fall. You got to be really careful with this when kids go from the summer transition to the school transition because if they're totally wiped out from your exhausting max strength conditioning, which it should be, and now they're getting up in the morning and going to school, and now they're balancing so the new social aspects at school and the homework and all of that, you got to really take, uh, take a look at, and it might be a good time to throw in some rest days um, when they're doing that transition. Due to the intensity of this phase, you never want to do this in conjunction with full routine development, okay? especially when they're just getting new routines. Okay, because it's totally, it should be exhausting. You don't want a kid running out of the gas during a routine and coming in short on a landing on a dismount or whatever, or not having enough energy to do routines. So this phase is done in conjunction with part development, okay, skill development, maybe some parts, um, and you're really concentrating on getting stronger at this point, okay. Again, this is a, an important. Uh, an important phase to monitor because the intensity of the exercises are very, very difficult. You want to make sure you're not sacrificing difficult for range of motion, form and execution, proper technique. That's very important. If you have to, then you back off the intensity. You drop down the weight or you drop down the numbers of exercises or the angles just to make sure that they can always concentrate on proper form, execution, technique. Okay, now we've beat them up a little bit, and I'm, I'm, the max strength is is pretty pretty intense. We go into a phase which is called conversion. Our conversion phase is basically taking that max strength that we've developed and more specifically adapting it to the sport of gymnastics. This is where we start adding quickness type exercises, plyometrics, dynamics, speed type exercises. Um, shaping, a little bit more shaping, hollow holding and handstand work and things like that. Fatigue is less here and it's very important that this phase is not about fatiguing. It's about training the body to do spe sport specific conditioning. Okay, It's all about the shapes and the quickness and things like that and that doesn't require fatiguing the muscles as much. Okay, This is where we would introduce plyometrics. Okay. True plyometrics are not fatiguing. Okay, it's very important to know that one. You can do some jumping exercises to develop, you know, to fatigue the muscles. That we use that throughout the program. But if we're truly, if we're truly trying to do plyometric exercises, we're training the synapses to fire faster. We're trying to train, quote, quick twitch. Okay, so we don't want to be fatigued. Otherwise, the muscles will not fire fast. And if they don't fire fast, we're not getting the results we want out of the conversion phase. So this phase is a lot less fatiguing. Okay, um, It can be done in conjunction with some routine development. Now we're getting to combinations, three-quarter routines, that type of thing, because it is less, con uh, less uh, intense. All right? And um, we use this phase late, mid-fall to the beginning of the competitive season. All right, and our final phase, which I don't have a slide for, but it's pretty simplistic. It's really a ma it's called a maintenance phase. This is a phase you use during your championship season. Pretty intense, but very, very short in duration. We cut the sets and the numbers down, but we do some intense exercises where you just want to maintain strength. This cuts the amount of time you need for your conditioning, gives you a little more time allotted for routine perfection. Um, some weak areas, maybe instead of because now you're not conditioning as long, you can go over and work on your dance presentation or a few extra stuck landings and things like that. It's a phase you use during the final leg to your championship season where you get all your energy put into routine perfection 
and you just want to maintain your strength through that championship season. Okay? All right. Now we get into the complex part. You notice there was a gap. We got to the beginning of the competitive season, which is, you know, maybe January. And with the maintenance phase, we're going to use that in May. What do we do in the meantime? Okay? In a perfect gymnastic world, we'd just schedule a meet and be done, and we'd start all over again. But we have the multitude of uh, uh, invitationals we got to go to. And, um, you know, when you're working with the elite program, it's a lot easier a lot easy to, a lot easier to peak your athletes and use these four phases and then compete and then start over again. Well, it doesn't work in college, and it doesn't work in um, the JO system because you have so many competitions. So basically what we introduce is what's called microcycles. And basically all these are short blasts of these different phases designed not to get any other benefit other than to remind the body what they were supposed to do. Max strength is reminding them about power and getting stronger. The conversion phase reminding them how to get off the ground faster. And we do little one week to ten day microcycles built in between our competitive events. Now we like to schedule our meets every three weeks. Okay, so we do a meet, we have a little downtime, we throw a microcycle in there for seven to ten days, get a little rest going into the next next competition and repeat. Okay? But otherwise, you know, just it nature of the beast, it is what it is. This is the best system that we've come up with. You could uh, try to maintain conversion all the way through the entire competitive season, but I think you would eventually lose the benefit of that. So you should throw in these little build-up, a little blast of build-up, a little blast of conversion, blast of max strength, and then do these microcycles until you get to that mass, um, that maintenance phase in your championship season. All right? This is a long question. Last phase, and I created this one all by myself. This is not in any book. It's called the rest phase. I have come to the conclusion that athletes cannot condition 52 weeks a year and survive this sport. So we periodically, through instinct, it's usually after the, each phase, we'll throw in a couple days of rest, maybe even up to a week of rest where they just don't condition. That doesn't mean they get to go home early. Well, they work on weakness areas. They'll get extra flex time, extra dance time, or whatever. But I think it's important to let that body rest a little bit and then help with uh, adaptation to the conditioning programs that they're in. All right. Ooh, that, was a, that took a lot to get through that one. Hi, folks. John Getter here. I hope you got some great value from this video. I've got a few more Q&A videos I'd like to share with you, and you can grab those right now by simply clicking on the link below. Go ahead, click on the link below in the description box so that you can get your hands on these excellent Q&A videos to help you set up your gymnastics program for success. Now, I've answered questions from coaches like you from all around the world who are struggling to put in place a conditioning program that works. So go ahead, click on the link below to get the next set of videos in this gymnastics conditioning series. I hope you enjoy it.